Hey everybody, my name is Norm, and I'm grateful to be here to talk to you about the latest improvements in LabVIEW in LabVIEW 2025 Q1. Within this release, we had a few major focus areas that we really wanted to get into. In particular, we wanted to expand our cross-language updates, uh, our ability to have a collaborative workflow improvements, so things that if you're doing, say, source code control. Uh, we wanted to enhance the features needed to do uh, continuous integration and continuous development. And lastly, we added a few different uh, front panel elements. And so we're gonna go through each one of these things today and just a little bit more as well. So first up, let's talk about those cross language improvements. So Microsoft has uh, basically had two versions of .NET going in parallel. One referred to as .NET Framework and then another known as .NET Core. Uh, Microsoft refers to it just as .NET now. Uh, but in particular, uh, there are improvements and kind of a long future in front of the new version of .NET referred to as .NET Core. And so NI has been continuing to integrate that in just as we supported .NET Framework, we're now supporting .NET Core assemblies from within it. And there's a variety of reasons why this is good if you are someone who has .NET assemblies that you choose to leverage. Now, in particular, uh, for the LabVIEW developer, what does that mean and how does that work? Well, rather than show you a bunch of slides, let's just go ahead and get into the code and see what that looks like. All right, so first up on the list, uh, basically I've got a little VI that hopefully will be shared out to the community and uh, we can probably put a link to the, uh, the posting so that you can kind of see this code alongside of it as well, as, long, as well as the presentation. But in particular, if you're a LabVIEW user, what you should do is basically uh, go ahead and look at uh, the connectivity palette and just in the same place where you would select a .NET assembly, you do all the same things. But what you end up doing is uh, all the way over here, you can see that now we provide two different uh, selections from what you're choosing, whether or not it's a .NET framework constructor or a .NET core constructor. And then the same thing goes for the static methods and properties that if you were to go ahead and right click on any one of those, say a .NET method uh, down here in the bottom, you can go through, uh, so, uh, let's see, uh, select method, sorry. Uh, you would end up going through and you would select the uh, class. And then from there, you would go through and select uh, .NET Framework uh, or indeed uh, .NET Core and then do the typical browsing that you would do. Once again, if you're already familiar with using .NET assemblies in there. So that's available for you to take advantage of. Uh, in the previous release, we kind of had a preview feature. This is the full release that we have. Although that's the way that you can use and choose a .NET assembly from within the framework, uh, there are a few things to note that we have available in LabVIEW. So the features that we have currently enabled within it is basically the ability to load and run uh, the .NET 8.0 or .NET Core assemblies on Windows. You can actually build an application, as you might expect, or LabVIEW built executable that leverages those same assemblies. Uh, and then you can also define and use the static properties and methods. That was that last thing that I was showing where I was right clicking on a property node and just kind of navigating to the different, whether it's framework or core assemblies. Now, all that being said, core and framework are not currently uh, have e say parity in features. Uh, there are some limitations that we currently have. Uh, currently, there's no ability to set a, a .NET core container on the front panel where there is with the a .NET framework. Uh, there also currently is not the ability to register VIs for .NET core, uh, .NET 8.0 uh, callbacks. And also building, you cannot build a LabVIEW VI or LabVIEW application into a .NET core assembly. So just be aware of those things. We're going to continue our work and development with this. But as you go forward, this is a key feature that we've enabled in 2025 Q1. All right, moving forward, other languages that we're supporting. So we know that Python continues to be a popular language out in the world. There's no contesting that. Uh, but in particular, LabVIEW is continuing to uh, expand its own coverage. Uh, currently, we were supporting in our previous version up to 3.10. Now we're supporting all the way up to 3.12. And uh, for those of you who are Python users or Python integrators, there's a variety of enhancements that uh, I'm not a Python user, but I've been told uh, make these newer versions uh, particularly valuable. Now, in particular, for you as the LabVIEW developer, what should you know? What should you do to leverage these? Basically, if you're using a 3.10 version, you can just point it at 3.12 and it operates all the same. So that being said, let's actually go through and look at some things in LabVIEW and even a tip or trick if you keep your eyes peeled uh, for actually leveraging uh, a couple different features in LabVIEW to go ahead and look at some of these speed performance improvements, not because of LabVIEW, but because of the enhancements in the versions of Python. All right, so uh, if I go to the uh, Python 3.11 and 3.12, 
one of our developers was kind enough to give me an example uh, to go ahead and do some of these comparisons in here. Uh, and it, indeed, I can go ahead and just run it as is. And you can see that basically we're initializing our link to the version. We're calling the method. In this case, it doesn't have anything actually going into it. And of course, closing. Now, one of the things that I wanted to highlight is that when doing benchmarking, I'm a LabVIEW developer coming on 26 years, that's a little scary to say, uh, is you have to be careful of the uh, initialization and close being part of your benchmarking. So I took a moment to kind of clean this up and I realized I wanted to take that chance to introduce you to a new, relatively speaking, new feature, not in 2025 Q1, but uh, let's say we have a nugget of code that we want to indeed benchmark. One of the features that we can use, let me see if I can just uh, get in on it here, uh, is if you just start to select an object on the diagram and then press control space. You'll see a, a, a dialogue does pop up here that one of the options that's available here is to take the code that you have surrounded and put something around it. And you can see here I have create timing sequence. And so what that'll do is it'll actually snap basically a flat sequence structure around it that will already have the needed parts and pieces to do the comparison. And so I'll do the same thing down here. Once again, just select the object, press control space, create timing sequence. And so now I very easily was able to take a currently existing piece of LabVIEW code and test it out in parallel. So we've got a 3.10 and 3.11. And if I run this, and basically it's just looking at an ever increasing uh, string length going from one character to 50 million characters, calculating how long the string is along the way. It's a bit of a contrived example, but it does show that just the raw performance difference as you move between the two versions of Python, clearly seeing a very marked uh, decrease. Uh, so what are some of the features and limitations if you're using Python 3.11 or 3.12? Well, there's no new LabVIEW features inherently that we've enabled. We just basically allow you to call into those environments. And speaking of environments, we also still continue to enable the usage of the virtual environments or Anaconda to allow Python to exist with multiple packages and libraries installed to do uh, all that work in particular. So there also, as far as limitations goes, uh, now in 2025 Q1, we are only supporting back to version 3.9 and greater. So do keep that in mind. If you're using some older packages, you might need to find that are only compatible in the previous versions. You might need to find ones that uh, allow you to move forward. All right, so now we're done with talking about other languages and calling them from LabVIEW. Let's talk about things that you can do in LabVIEW. Now, in environments where you're going to have some kind of collaborative workflow, it's not just you and your code base and a bench and instruments. Uh, it's very common to want to do things that have source code control, and then also the ability to compare uh, differences in VIs as versions go through, and then also the ability to report. Well, we know that this has been a long request of the LabVIEW community, and so we're continuing to invest uh, in this area to facilitate higher level programming kind of workflows that include this. Uh, and so you can see some of the things that we've improved there, uh, but rather than just read off the bulleted list, I wanna just go ahead and get back into the code and show you. All right, so in the code that we have here, I'm just taking two separate VIs, I'm pulling the path out of it, and then I'm gonna be going through and calling labviewcompare.exe with a few different parameters afterwards. This is the same exact methodology you would point at your, say, uh, your Git interactive provider, uh, or anything else to go ahead and invoke the comparison process. But for me in LabVIEW, I'm gonna stay in LabVIEW and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that, create a new VI, drop it on the block diagram and run. And if all goes according to plan, both of those two VIs, although the icon looks the same, it's different, we will now be able to go ahead and look through the differences of those VIs. A few things worth noting, if you haven't seen them before, let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in here a little bit. There we go. So we have the ability to include or exclude certain features of the difference report. Some of those tags that I had after the ibucompare.exe were those things. I left off the cosmetic things on the front panel uh, and block diagram. But then basically we should be able to use uh, our, our keys, our uh, just up, down, left, right keys to go ahead and uh, navigate through some of each one of these changes. And you can kind of see I'm pressing uh, left, right to move between those two tables. And then as I move up, down, you can see that we're highlighting the different components that have been identified as specific changes. And also one of the other things that you maybe have seen is that each one of those boxes, as opposed to previous years, we're now using a little bit of a color coding scheme to indicate, is it a new object? Uh, is it merely a changed object? Or is it an object that has been deleted? So that's basically our green, blue, and red for new, changed, and deleted. So we found that uh, that plus a certain degree of clumping that ends up happening. Let me see if I can find one of those that has a few more 
uh, inside of it. There you go. So that is a front panel object that has multiple changes in it. You can see it's highlighted over here by the uh, A, B, C, D elements. And then if I press right on my keyboard, you can see that I can kind of nose through each one of those discrete changes that are highlighted. Each one of these things are intended to help you as the developer work with other teammates and look and compare changes in code bases. Now that's not where it stops. Uh, we actually have done some very specific things recently in terms of creating reports from these very specific objects. So I can go through and I can create that. Basically, if I go over here, you can see that there is a create report option. Uh, not only that, there's also the ability now to swap VI positions and you can also copy the images if you're creating Git reports and you kind of want to copy those things. So rather than create the report, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the link that I put into the VI. And very quickly, we can see all the things that are now in that report. You can see what's included, excluded, and some of the new enhancements as well that we've put into this report is very simply to collapse very specific sections in there, which matters a lot, especially if there's a lot of changes or the change of an individual section is particularly lengthy. There's a variety of other minor changes in terms of making it easier to read, but all of these things have, uh, have been put in place to accelerate your time to work in collaboration with other teammates and do these comparisons. All right, lastly, some of the things that we're not going to showcase this time, but we have also gone through and created enhancements uh, in the actual text files that LabVIEW uses, that being project, libraries, and classes. If you've never looked into them, they kind of have an XML structure. And we've also recognized people want to diff or compare those two files. And so we've cleaned up some of the nomenclature and some of the wording to make it easier for you to use a basic text editor to just compare those text-based files in LabVIEW. All right, uh, so we're getting towards the end here. Some of the things that we've done as well are working through tabular UI enhancements. Now, don't take this as the tab control. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about tables tabular type interfaces. And so we're gonna look at what some of those things are that we've added in terms of adding row colors or alternating row colors, and then also enabling word wrapping. So let's go ahead and get back into the code. So one of the features that is indeed available that you can see kind of highlighted here is that if you have a table, if you have actually, we have them all highlighted here of the, the key parts, you've got tree, table, multi-column list box and list box. If you have any one of those controls, you can know that you may have seen over the years uh, if you don't have alternating row colors, it makes it a little bit harder to see. I have an illustration of that here. Let's go ahead and stop this VI that I've kind of created for looking at different uh, features within LabVIEW itself. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn it off. I'm going to go to the, uh, let's see what I've got here, row options, and I'm going to go ahead and turn alternating colors off. And I'm going to go to uh, open all items. And you can see that we indeed have a large list here of all the different features of LabVIEW over the years. Uh, but to make it a little bit more visually appealing, people used to jump through hoops to kind of get the alternating rows. Now we've made it a first class citizen, basically by being able to come into here, go to row options and turn the alternating colors on. And of course you can choose to uh, change those to whatever uh, color that you might so desire for your application or your theming. So a nice feature there. And then also there is the ability to allow for word wrap. So if I were to go ahead and change uh, my columns here, you'll see that some of these uh, are trimmed off to basically uh, the, to which text for the row. And now you can see in a couple different instances here for 2021 and say, I think that was for other versions, maybe that was 2019. Those have now automatically word wrapped based on the column width. So once again, useful features if you're using tables, uh, multi-column list box or things of that nature. So particularly useful. Now, one of the other things that I had mentioned in the key themes was the ability to facilitate uh, CI-CD, continuous integration, continuous development workflows. Now, these workflows typically have kind of worker VIs that will go through and automatically kind of uh, whitewash code and be able to straighten things out and make sure everything's okay before building into a package. Uh, and now with uh, previous versions of LabVIEW, we enabled you to use a new version of LabVIEW but have it automatically save libraries and VIs and projects to prior versions so that you could work with other people that have different versions of LabVIEW. Well, now we've given you the ability to go ahead and programmatically set that so that you can actually have that as part of your CI CD workflow so that you could always ensure that regardless of what somebody maybe has developed in, as it goes through your workflow, you can programmatically set it before saving and before building and before deploying. Once again, it's an enhancement to the typical workflows of more advanced developers, uh, and that can be very, very useful. And so that's uh, given this the ability to set the version and then also query the version from a project 
and then say push that down to things I have highlighted here as a say LabVIEW class library or library as well. Before we go there, I wanted to show one last thing that we've enabled in LabVIEW, and that is also the ability to uh, go ahead and uh, hide certain elements on the diagram. So this is a long time community requested feature. Uh, if you're not using certain parts of structures, let me see if I can just zoom in here. You'll see that uh, the difference between say these two diagrams is that there's no uh, iteration indicator in this case, uh, we have lost and dropped the uh, internal data nodes. And then also on the time loops, uh, if you don't need those specific data elements, either to query or set, they just take up extra space and they kind of bloat the code. And so the, as the community has requested, uh, we've gone through and we've enabled the ability to very simply right click on those, go to visible items. And now you can see that we are going allowing for you to go ahead and hide that iteration terminal as a visible item on your structure. So once again, just a lot of feedback that we're getting from the community. These are some small things, but also very impactful to those that are trying to create cleaner diagrams and diagrams that basically speak easier to what the code's doing. All right, so for uh, just to kind of put a pin in this portion of the code before I close it out, I really did want to highlight that uh, if you are interested in knowing the feature changes in LabVIEW, there's the link that's available there. And then also we've compartmentalized all of the changes since LabVIEW 2019 as you can see right here. And all of those changes under of basically since 2019 are listed and linked from a singular page. And so other than the, say the VI that I was working on earlier, you go to that link and you'll see, you can kind of browse what's been changing over the years, particularly if you've been using an earlier before 2019 version, or even if you have been using it since 2019, as I have, there were even features that I was not even aware of. So. Uh, even going through and preparing for this presentation, uh, I learned about certain features that uh, had kind of slipped past me. So be sure to check those out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about what's going on in 2025 Q1 in the LabVIEW community. Uh, so in particular, the LabVIEW Wiki has been around for a while now, but there's been a lot of investment from the community and even from NI to update certain things, not only what's new in LabVIEW here, but also say things like the LabVIEW uh, style guide. There's been a major update on that and other key pages on labviewwiki.org. So if you've never seen that before, or you didn't know about that, or as noted here on the left-hand side, uh, the LabVIEW community edition, head over to the LabVIEW wiki and you can find out more about those things with links, code, and also access to the community. Speaking of the community, uh, another thing that's been very active within the past year, and in particular in the first quarter of 2020, 2025, is a, so many dimensions of what LabVIEW developers outside of NI are involved in. There's things like the LabVIEW Community Training Initiative, where the community has created their own LabVIEW getting started experience uh, to kind of do it on the uh, as simple and as fast and as cost effective as possible. GDevCon continues to be a very, very active uh, community organized event, non-NI, although NI sponsored, where uh, happening all over the world, I think the, uh, was it, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, North America, and Europe. Uh, there's a LabVIEW Discord that uh, I personally am active on quite a bit. There's a uh, an AI bot from our partner over at JKI, and they've been really updating a lot of those features. And one of the stalwarts of the LabVIEW community, Lava, or LavaG.org, continues to uh, play a very significant role in kind of forum-based, community-owned and community-driven uh, LabVIEW community activity. So it's growing and it's more active than it ever has. So please, if you're a LabVIEW developer or you're curious, go ahead and get involved in one of those or just be sure to check them out. And if you see me on there, be sure to say hi. All right, so that brings us to a close talking about 2025 Q1. So our key focus area is once again, working on those cross, working on those cross language updates, working on collaborative workflow improvements, enabling CI CD workflow, and then kind of the front panel element enhancements. And of course the other things that I'd kind of showcased uh, even from previous versions too. So hopefully that gave you a good feel of what's new and gives you the ability to uh, go ahead and dive in with the latest version, whether or not you're on 24Q3 already or all the way back on say 2017 or before. Be sure to log in, download the evaluation or just get your own version of LiveView Plus Suite today. And with that, I appreciate your time and I'll see you next time. Thanks.